protect your DNA. BioPQQ can promote formation of new mitochondria. InfoWarsStore.com I'll tell you who else is the man in the arena. Jesse James. I've known this guy like five, six years. Off, we're not going to get into the details, but our kids are friends, hang out. The daughter just stayed at your house last night. Uh, so much is going on. We're, oh, you, you, know, you know, we're parents in this fight. All this is going on. We're just regular Americans, and we as parents just want a free country. And you're the first person. I remember when it happened. Within minutes, it was like Jesse James endorses Donald Trump. So I know you guys are friends. Congratulations on being on the right side of history. Thank you. <laughs> I'm wound up as you can tell, but Jesse James, <laughs> you're, you know, behind the scenes you're a pretty wild guy, but you're also pretty calm on air. Where should we go with this? I mean, why'd you back Trump? Where do you see this going? Second Amendment, you're launching a national gun group with him. How awesome. Well, I think it, uh, I don't know, when I sent him a note, I sent him a text when NBC cut him off when he decided to run for president. And he had, you know, it's a hit show, 15, 20 million people a week watching The Apprentice or Celebrity Apprentice. And, you know, lots of sponsorship, lots of, you know, product placement endorsement deals and he basically told NBC, F you, you know, they, they're obviously, you know, as stuff transpired, you can see how twisted it is towards the left. And he, you know, and I told him, I said, Hey man, that was like an iron balls move to like do that. And you got my respect. And, um, you know, just started talking with him and, <clears throat> uh, I just felt compelled to no one, everybody thought it was a joke. Everybody thought that he wasn't serious. It was like a publicity stunt. And when, uh, you know, I just wrote a piece of like my personal point of view, like not my opinion, not my, this is the person that I saw. And is this person cut out to be a president in it? And it, it, you know, it was like 25 or 30. I don't even know how many it is now, but 20 or 35 million views on Facebook. And, uh, you know, it kind of was the first person to come out and endorse him. Hey, man, I have your back. If you want to be president, he doesn't need that. I think what a lot of people miss is he doesn't need to be president. And he sh sure as hell doesn't need to go through the crazy amount of BS that he's had to go through. And you figure if anybody's going to walk through fire like that, and like he has been put under the microscope, that he must really, really love America and love this country. Well, I took your endorsement because I know you're a real guy. People see TV, you know, one of the top TV hosts of all time, probably one of the, the top, not Donald Trump, and you're a real guy. I'm not kissing your ass. It's true. And you haven't done reality TV in a long time because as you pointed out to me, it's so much of it's garbage. It's fake. And here you are. We were talking like a year and a half ago. You know, no, Trump's for real. And I talked to other folks. They said, no, Trump's for real. And now you've seen it, what he's gone through, what he's done, what he's done for us, our families, uh, pointing out how we've been screwed over by special interests that have sold out the American dream because America was dominating <clears> the world. <throat> and so here we are. He's He's gone through all this, and now he bucked the system. He defeated the Republicans and the establishment saying he couldn't win the nomination or that they would take it away. They failed. And now here he is in every poll now, even fixed polls, surging past Hillary Clinton. This is like beyond some football movie or something. This is beyond some Disney movie. I'm like... Pinching myself, Jesse James, is this real? It's like swimming up the, you know, the world up the world's biggest stream because everybody's against him. But you know what? There's one key factor that don't that people don't. All these people that oh, she's gonna win. It's gonna be easy. They don't figure that there's like hardworking American people that want something better for the future. They don't read tabloids and they don't they're they don't care if Jay Z plays on stage. They don't care about all that stuff. They want someone that like comes to their town looks them in the eye and tells them, like, hey, man, I'm going to bust my ass to do something better for you. I only bring this up because it's totally organic. You know, my daughter, your daughter, good friends. <clears throat> it's crazy. I'm not pushing Trump paraphernalia on them. I'm not saying do this or that political, and they're big fans of Trump for, like, over a year. And and that's what I'm saying. The, the, you know, their, their other friends are Trump fans. That's got to scare the system. I talk to people with other kids in other schools. They go, no. You know, we're talking 12, 13-year-old girls kids boys 14. They were, we were at dinner ton, tonight uh talking about they have like hillary has some snapchat filter app and she was uh talking about how her and her friends at school you know were 
doing the Snapchat filter, but acting like they're vomiting when they had like yeah. Hillary. He's like, Bleh, Hillary, like I'm with her. Like, That's all over the web, yeah. Yeah, and it's funny. So what does that say if if we pushed our kids to be for something, they wouldn't do it? I never told them anything about Trump. I try to shield them. They're all Trump, Trump, Trump. I mean, I know your daughter. So what does that say? I, well, kids are a lot smarter than, you know, I didn't know anything about politics when I was growing up. You know, my grandpa, like, okay, we're Republicans. And then my grandpa always watched nightly news and then read the paper. And that's how you got information. I think kids like have the world's biggest en encyclopedia now in all their pockets. So they want to know something they can find oh, out. Those damn phones, and it, yeah. Yeah, and it's crazy. But there's something positive about it because. Yeah, I think so. They're well informed and they're not going to just do what everybody tells them or spoon feeds them, you know. Well, I don't want to build us I have up. to be honest with you, though. I have to I have to say this first and foremost. I you know what? <clears throat> Cuz we're friends with I'm friends with Dan Winters, you know, I'm the godfather of his son and like he had sent me videos. This is before I moved here full time. Oh, you got to check out this guy Alex. I thought you're pretty crazy. <laughs> like like, you know, banks are poison in our water and blah 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 and all this stuff and I was like, "Wow, this guy's a nut." And then I found out we live pretty close to each other and then our kids hung out and stuff and then this whole year has been like, wow, Alex is right on a lot of stuff. Well, you're nice to say that. Listen, listen. So, so, thank you, brother. There you go. Dan Winters, the top photographer in the world. Yeah. So he loves you. I, yeah. I remember years ago, he was taking some photos for some magazines. And yeah. listen, I wish I was wrong. The problem is, I've read the crap that I, I do this all well, day. All the stuff, you know, all the stuff that I could never wrap my head around. It's like you're a motorcycle. Well, I'm in the shop all day, so I can't watch TV while I work. So I listen to the radio. So I listen to your show. I listen. I was an NPR listener until like. You know, about a year ago, when it's it's so heavily slanted to the left, it is it's very so, slick and smooth. It's, it's, it's yeah, it when everything becomes so obviously. By like, the way, can I just say this on air? You keep telling me. By the way, I'm not just doing this. Was not planned. Did we do we talk before this interview? No, nope. except like on like text messages. Nope. You I sent want, me. The, you sent me the address. I sent the address. I want you send me tempting me these guns, and then every time I try to buy one, oh sorry, it's sold. And I've learned from people, and I've been to your house several times i've seen it you are literally like festus or vulcan in these spacesuits with <laughs> fire i'm like 50 feet away and there's these huge machines i can't even go in there and you're making all this stuff there's no one there jesse james firearms is you and there's an assembly well, we line of Dave, weapons Dave no 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 there too. I mean, well there's some people but how are you let me tell you that's super that's so manly I remember when my grandpas could like fix combines and do anything, and I like, can't do electricity work. My I dad. Made, I made so how this, do you do it? How made, do you do it? I made this one right here. Well, listen, the ones you sent me with the little leaves and everything. I forged I, that one. Oh my god! Can I just please buy the next gun? <laughs> I mean, look at this 45 911. It's all Damascus. I forged all that. It's a thousand twenty six layers on the side. And no, this is beautiful. But that one you sent me with the leaves. Yeah, all the, and all the intricate one, work. Yep. But the problem is, you keep saying, "Yeah, I'll let you buy one," and then you never let me buy one. But the crazy thing is, one. I don't think folks actually understand. You literally are making these. This is not like think, you put your name tell, on this. I try to tell people, but I think since I have this certain dude, you go to your house, it's like in a volcano. <laughs> it's like a freaking well, I think people, fire shooting out. You're in a spacesuit. I think once you once you reach a certain level of fame, people think that I'm like in my office with a top hat and a monocle and like, oh, I'm just. You told me. You said I don't even go in the house. <laughs> I don't like all, all these fat. French Bulldogs, though. Yeah, the, the shop restroom was busted for about two weeks, and I had to walk in the Beautiful. house to, like, piss, and it, like, it was the worst. I never even leave the property, though. I'm like a hermit. I just like to work. That's a beautiful place out there. Now, Jesse, looking at Trump and, and all of this, listen, I, I, I never liked the Democrats. The Republicans don't deliver on what they say they're doing, but I agree with their platform more. But with Trump, I mean, I've gone from, like, grudgingly supporting him a year and a half ago to, like, so proud that I support him. This guy, the stamina, the work, the attacks, the demon. You've it'll be, dealt with it'll be, life. it'll, it'll be the best vetted president we've ever had ever. And I think uh, everybody was ready for a change when not the Obama change, but when Obama ran the first time, I bought into it a little bit. I was like, well. Hey, man, it'd be cool to have a black... I'll be, be honest, I was neutral because I was sick of Republicans. Yeah, I hate it'll, be, it'll be cool to have a... I grew up in the hood, man. I was born in Linwood and grew up in Southgate and Long Beach, and I was like, man, it'd be cool to have a brother as president. You know, that's what we need. I want to be You know, we needed Billy D. Williams to come in and like, look, this is what it's going to be like. You know, we needed that. Instead, we got Urkel, and then everybody realized like, oh, wait, he's a college professor. And it's like, 
If college professors were so great at what they do, how come they're not all billionaires? <laughs> well, not exactly. Not and knocking it, teachers because like, there is a rare case yeah, where somebody yeah. goes and teaches, but teachers teach because they can't do. Yeah. Every every college professor, when I was in college, they're all disgruntled. They all feel like everything's stacked against them, and they're all like, I, I don't know. I just I'm so disappointed because that guy could have been so great. He could have been he single-handedly he with like a few words. He could end all division in this country. He could end all racism. He could lift up homeless people and all that stuff. But no, know, that's why I tacitly. What, it, what it's really all about? It's all about himself. It's all about you know how where's he going to land soft at? What kind of a badass house is he going to have? That's what it's all about. I was about to say, vac we thought Bush was bad vacationing two months a year, three, four, five months a year. You can tell a lot about people. I know Bush's Secret Service guys, and that guy's. He's nice. It's the greatest guy ever. I know uh, some of the couple of Secret Service guys we did guns that are with Trump now, and he's you know, he, that guy's like <coughs> down to earth. You know, he's hanging out. With I know. The, with the I know. Staff. I know a guy was with Hillary, and I know one guy that's with Michelle, and a oh, former man. guy with Obama, <coughs> and they all three of them treat them like dirt. Well, Hillary doesn't let you. And look I think I think I'm a firm believer that you can tell a lot about a person is how they treat the little guy. And, and when they treat him like they're, you know what that means? It means they're in a position they didn't earn. You know, Trump, say what, man, that guy's had ups and downs, everything else, but he earned where he's at, and he has to bust his ass to stay there. And his dad was literally blue collar and came from nothing. That's the secret of Trump. Yeah. You know, and I, I just, I don't know. I have, uh, I think every, myself, you, everybody with all the information that we can get now and especially like WikiLeaks and all that stuff is you feel it makes you feel helpless because you just want to go over and like like jump you just want to grab John Podesta and shake him you know. No, but, I, I agree but, with you because I'm not a guy calling for violence, but I'm always no, honest. No, but we can't do anything. I actually about start it. having like fantasies because. <laughs> 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 Let me ask you this question. Okay. I don't sit here and say what I want to believe. I say what's happening. I've talked to the top pollsters to see the numbers. Trump surging. He clearly is winning the battleground states. What do we do tomorrow night when CNN says she won? I mean, what do I do? I'm not going to be violent, but I'm not going to stop promoting liberty. Well, you know, I don't know. You know, I think people need to figure out a way to rise up and band together. And, you know, if we can't vote someone out of office that is, is ineffective and keep someone out of office that's an th obvious thief and stealing from us, you know, I just look at like all the money that Hillary's taken in the foundation, you know, imagine the dent she could have made in the homeless situation in America. How she stole 94% of the Haitian money. Yeah, you know, come on, like. Who know. comes up with this? Let me ask you this question. Looking at this, and let's talk about Donald Trump, because you've told me stuff about Trump, no, nothing secret or private, but just how real he was. Back when I was first a year and a half ago supporting him, we were over at your house shooting with Shane Steiner. And, and watching you smith some guns. But then I talked to Jerome Corsi, who was high level in the State Department. Other people, they say, no, Trump knew what you knew, Alex, 30 years ago. He's just been waiting for the right moment. Yeah, it's all timing. You know, he's ahead of his time. You know, you can <coughs> you can hear p bits and pieces of his messages and old, you know, stuff with interviews with Oprah and stuff like that. You know, he's never wavered. And he's, I don't know, I'm, I'm like an entrepreneur of humans, and I have the best BS detector ever. I can. That's meet, right. He was always against NAFTA again. Yeah. yeah, and I can I can meet someone and like know whether they're full of shit or not. And like him, I don't I don't get that. And look at his kids. His kids are rad. Don Jr. and Ivanka, and like they're and they're part of the deal. Like we're gonna have like them in on it, you know. And I think no, it's like it's like we're it's like we're getting a group of superheroes. <clears throat> Treat this like a job interview. So I have a big business that has thousands of employees. And I'm, who am I going to hire? I have two sp perspective clients. You know, take personality and politics aside. Let's just go on job, you know, requirements and what their actual qualifications are. Trump's going to win by a mile. Hillary's taking naps think, all day and sold out the communist Chinese. I mean, that's the thing. He's so presidential. Does anybody, no one's ever done eight campaign stops a day or five on average. No one's ever had the stamina. No, I, mean, I, I, like, was, I, was, I posted something after I voted last week, and I had a UAW shirt on from the old uh, Mound Road plant that made, like, I think they made Chrysler engines. 
And then someone posted something about like, oh, Mike Pence, you know, he's a union buster and stuff like that. I'm like, don't you think unlimited immigration and letting people flood in the country, isn't that kind of a union buster? <laughs> yeah, why do the unions, nothing against people coming in, I get why they're doing it. Why do we have to pay for everybody and then have Obama? Did you see him with the interviewer saying, I'm illegal, I'm going to vote? And he goes, well, that's your right to do? Yeah, I just think, you know, hey. It doesn't mean we hate anybody, but can we go to China or Mexico and vote? Look, honestly, like I've ran a business for 25 years and I had a couple hundred employees in California and a good portion of those people were without papers. And I could take them right down to the spot where I knew a guy. I could get a real green card for each of them for 600 bucks. And get a real social security guard with the hologram for two grand. But in retrospect, thinking about that now, like the guys like Alex that you met at the shop, he's from Honduras and he's like got a lawyer. He's already in the in the citizenship process. And I agree. Doing make it, right. it make and the legal pay, process. And he pays easier. taxes. Because you know what? We are America and we do let Well the people... Democrats want to keep it underground well, so they control it. No, but here's the thing like we can let millions of people in there. But every one of those millions of people should stand side by side with us on tax day and pay their fair share. And I think a lot of the people, you know, I watched every Friday on payday at West Coast Choppers in Long Beach. I'd sign all their paychecks and there were the mobile check cashing truck used to pay, pull up and they'd all cash their checks, not take any taxes out and send most of the money Mexico. back to Mexico. And I'll say this right now. You do have to pledge allegiance if you want to be in this. Yeah, I don't care what color you but are. In, in, You're going to be pro-private property, pro-family, pro-gun. We're going to make you wealthy, but you got to sign on and not be a socialist. Well, it's 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 about us, not me, because me running my business like that and saving money on labor, I was only thinking about myself. I wasn't thinking about the betterment of the country because there is guys that have all legal employees and they're all paying taxes. Sure, but you're being honest. It was a part of your process. Yeah, it was part of the process. In I mean, it's like I paid for abortions. It doesn't I paid for abortions when I was 18. Now I'm against it. And it doesn't mean I'm some yeah. hypocrite. I'm just being honest about it. Yeah. But I think I mean, it, you grow. Yeah, yeah, and it's you learn like hey, you know, that's not, you know, when when the price for American made goods goes through the roof and everything goes to China, that's why because not only was I finding cheaper labor, but people are already taking it another step and like, okay, let's ship all the stuff over to China and make it over there or make it in Pakistan or South America. Well, it's worse. You read the globalist documents. They made deals to pass tax laws and stuff where it makes you go to China so the globalists, the different leftists and people, the banks, could manage deals with the communist generals on how could you get into China, see? So they actually induced us to go to China. Well, I think all these issues, I think with the people that support Hillary have strong feelings for all, only themselves. Like what's, I don't, I personally That's don't. That's profound. I'm, I'm, I'm going to interrupt you. Jesse James right now here with us. They've got studies out of Canada. We can pull them up. Studies out of the UK and the US. Actually one out of Texas. I don't mean this mean, but people calling themselves liberal are six times more likely to steal, 10 times more likely not to give to charity, and are just these self-centered people that social justice warrior uh, moral signal all day long, but they're actually, and then conservatives, not th that term, are way more likely to give. So you just hit the nail on the head. From your experience, flesh that out. What are you getting at? Because to well, me, that's think, the essence. I don't know. I think I was born in the wrong generation. You know, I got a lot of the Reagan generation coming off the Iran crisis and the hostage crisis, and I saw, you know, even as a kid, like 10 years old, I was like, man, Carter's weak. <laughs> you know, he's not he's not strong, and I think I've said it for years, you know, we need someone that's, you know, I don't know how much control a president will have fighting against Congress. You know, it's always going to be a, a, a push and pull, but at least they need to be a president. They need to, like, rally people and rally people together and realize, like, you know, it's united we stand. And if you, if everybody's only thinking about themselves and it's a personality conflict and stuff like that, I don't care if the person elected president, you know, looks like Godzilla. As long as he's in there doing the job and supports people and lifts us all sure. up and knows, you know, hey, when Trump wins tomorrow, I'm not going to have any regrets against anybody that voted for Hillary or have any ill will towards them. You know what? Because we're all Americans. 
they don't get a nation is like a ship. I mean, we're on the same team. Yeah, and it's like we all have to like band together, and we have, you know, for you know, I opened a home homeless shelter in Long Beach in 2004, and the, my big building there, I donated, and it's the Long Beach Rescue Mission. But I went against the grain when Long Beach, all the other businesses in the business corridor downtown wrote me these nasty letters saying we should bust the homeless out of Long Beach and stuff like that. And I'm like, you know what? No, I bought a building and like opened it, but I made it so you had to be employable to stay the night there and get food and get clothes and support. And you set by, a bar to make them better. By not by being employable means you have to be willing to work and dig yourself out of it. And we helped them find jobs. And I think when I moved in 2010, between 04 and 010, we found like, it was like 3,000 people we placed in permanent housing. And it's crazy. You moved in next but, door to Alex Jones. You can't make this stuff up. Jesse James <laughs> is our guest. JJFU.com. You're not here to promote stuff, but I'm going to make you do it. What is this badass gun? And I'm not just saying this. You make your own stuff. I don't know how you're doing it. A few folks that help you, but these are original crafted firearms. Tell us about this beautiful weapon we're looking at here. Um... Well, the Damascus pistol is one that I forged that you saw me doing a little bit of. And this is a, a 300 win mag, like precision bolt action rifle. And uh, we import a barrel in action from England, from RPA in England, and in every other piece except for the optic we make in house. And, you know, just. Now, I know you got a few little factories and stuff, and you also still do your shop or use some cars and motorcycles. But when I've been over at your place, I mean, it's like there's like one guy helping. You're in there literally like out of a movie with like huge furnaces and blasting fire in a spacesuit and like churning this stuff. How do you do that? You're like etching stuff yourself. And I'm told this is like 18 hours a day. I guess it's a love. It, well, I think the business in California got so big that, you know, with hundreds of employees and stuff, I didn't work anymore and I was miserable. And now I've eliminated everything from my life that would stop me from working. Like there's no phone in the shop, no TV. So it's clear to say, because I've been there and you're almost like, like oh, I'm going to do this. Like, sure. I mean, you're like, you love this. I love it. Like, I work, I forged Saturday all day making uh, some Damascus chef knives and um, some billets. I'm doing some guns out of Statue of Liberty material. And so I was working on it literally till like my ankles said, F you. And I, I like, <laughs> I barely made it from the shop to the house and then just laid. I was about to say, though, I don't just say this. I mean, that is, there's something super manly about watching my grandfather's fix combines and they knew how to do electricity or they knew how to fix everything. I don't know any of that. Watching you in there, it's just like, like weapons and badass stuff's coming out. I'm like, this is humanity, you know? Like like you were talking about wanting to teach people how to do that, was we've lost that. My dad knows how to fix anything compared to me. He was His dad was better than him. Well, I think we became, we used to be a do-it-yourself society, and now we became like a do-it-for-me society, you know? And, and everything's throw it, throwing away. Like when this pen, when that pen runs out, you just throw it out. Well, pens used to have cartridges in them. They're beautiful, yeah. So when you, when the pen went out, you just put a new one in it, you know? And it's kind of like... It's kind of like throw your family away, throw yeah. America away. Well, I think it's like disposable, you know? Put it in a landfill and like, you know, I think every... I, I don't know. I think I was born in the wrong era. You know, I would have been better in the 40s. What is that really cool big green machine you've got? That's my... It's like a big robot. It's a 1921 Watson Stillman... A uh, 350 ton forging press that says gargantua on it. 350 ton. Yeah. So, and then I have like a, a 70s Chambersburg forging hammer with a thousand pound head on it. That's the machine weighs. And what's that big spacesuit thing? Like you wear it looks like an iron, and like you're in there, and like the fire shooting out, and like. Well, it's because I when I'm standing in front of the forge, but actually I'm dumb because. I just built a shield for the front of the forge, and I kind of hide behind it now and turn it when it's in there. And so now this I, is I was there. You built more stuff. Yeah, now I don't need all that. So I can just do it with the put a bandana on, some dark glasses. I'm good. Still got big But gloves. what is it that's so to the Greeks, the Romans, you name it, primal about in the furnace of the volcano, just <laughs> like building things? Well, I think it's so simple. Like if you see like a, you know, a... 3D CNC router cutting out something really crazy out of wood. It's like the computer's doing all that. I have all these giant machines, but there still has to be like a dude in front of it. And it's just, you know, pressure. So it's the human interface. Yeah, it's pressure, like a hammer, big hammer, small hammer, ha you know, some kind of pressure, an anvil, and heat. It's only three elements. 
I, I've had a chance to talk to Trump some off air. I've had him on air, and I'm not going to get into because the media always twists it, makes a big deal. But but I know you were the first to endorse Trump. I know you, you were on a show with him. I know he likes you. He said that. Who? What makes him tick? Because for me, he's just he actually is like an underdog. He actually is in and not being screwed over. So he's a very aggressive alpha male, but he's not out to get the little guy. He sees America being screwed over and wants to like really bring in a new golden age. Is that an accurate or is that statement wrong? You know Donald Trump very well. I mean, who is Donald Trump? I think he has a big heart. You know, he's a, he's a good father, and I think that's his kids are a big priority, and that says a lot about someone that puts, you know, hey, the future of my kids in the forefront, and it shows in his older kids. And I think, uh, like, Eddie, who runs the mailroom at uh, Trump Tower is a Puerto Rican cat that's like, you know, and he's and like Trump gets there every morning, not when it's he's been on the road, but he gets there every morning and like drinks coffee with him out of the coffee machine, <laughs> you know, and it's like he treats And it's not patronizing. I'm told yeah. by a lot of folks he likes everybody. Yeah. And he really likes well, black people, I'm told. It's like. I don't think he really sees. He just likes people. Yeah, he doesn't see that. I mean, I'm, I mean, when I was on The Apprentice, uh, with Dennis Rodman, Dennis has an obvious really bad drinking problem, and I I suffered that for a little bit, and I really saw a side of him that like you know, it was sad and and you know sadness with mixed with compassion, and you know and it's not stuff that it, you can't fake that stuff, you know you can't fake like you care, you know you can fake happiness. I, I, sadness, let me tell you, I've, but, I've had conversa long conversations with Trump, and it's like. He's like reading my mind. It's crazy. He's yeah. smart. I mean, well, I think once he wins tomorrow and people really get to know him because all they're seeing is the, you know, media slanted the other way. So they're going to just cherry pick stuff that. Yeah, he says Hispanics are great people, really wonderful. I love them. They're the best. But criminals are coming here. We got to track them. A lot of criminals. Yeah. They turn it. All Mexicans are criminals. Yeah. And, you know, I'm in the interesting position that I felt that kind of ridicule and heat from media and tabloids and all that stuff. So I know what it's like. They'll twist anything to do. I got to say, I don't want to get into all that, but I know separate from you, I know the inside baseball, and then I talked to you and confirmed it. You were so classy. You never engaged. You just sat there and took it all. Well, a little bit. You, I mean, you really did. I remember seeing, I mean, you, I mean, you. I beat the shit out of a couple paparazzi only on No, accident. no, I get was, that. But I mean, you never struck back in a whole Hollywood setup for PR. Nah. It, you know what? I just kind of like, uh, you know, took my licks and just walked away. You know, I didn't belong where I was anyway. So, you know, I belong in my shop with my hood. I was about to say, you're like, people People think like Jesse James is a wild man, the number guy on TV, reality TV, guns, everything. And then knowing you, it's like, it's like whoa. I've it's like there's not like even that, anything <laughs> going on here but reality. It's the total difference than the emptiness of Hollywood. Because, you know, you've been offered tons of stuff. I've been offered things. It's, like, so empty. Like, thank God you're in Austin, brother. You like being in Austin? I dig it. Except for, man, it's pretty hot in August. It is. Well, plus, L.A.'s moving here. Nothing against California, but yeah. it's like, it is kind of, you know, all the trendies. And yeah. So we got to tell them. You gotta, if anybody wants to move here, tell them, like, oh, man, it's, like, crazy with insects. Well, we got, like, 18 minutes left. I appreciate you coming down tonight. During the 52-hour live broadcast, in just a few hours, it's midnight. We go into tomorrow. You keep saying when Trump wins tomorrow, let's. You got the floor. Just take over. Jesse James doesn't, you know, just show up for nothing. You're kicking ass. Tell us where you stand, where Trump is, where you see this going. Um, unless I think if there's going to be any kind of foul play or dirty tricks, I think it'll be pretty obvious. I think everything's so transparent now that I don't, I don't see how they can get away with it. Then that's that's really the only chance. She has to win, and I think it's, I've, I've, I have my ear to the ground and know people all over this country, and I can feel the groundswell, you know, can't you feel it? I can feel it. I'm, you know, I talking, can't even talking, sleep. talk to my good friend Rob in, in uh, Philadelphia, and they tried to go to the Trump rally, like, that's been about two or three weeks ago. They didn't get within... They got like 15 miles away from it. I left and, four and the, hours before he was here a few months ago. Yeah. Brother, I was in traffic for two hours and gave up. Our crew got there. They had to walk two miles in. Yeah. I just think people are fed up. People want their, you know, they may not know him that well, 
but things suck so bad now they're willing to take a chance and they want they want i think we just need we need to be inspired i like how trump says i'm not perfect nobody is but i've grown and i can really see that in the process and again well can you honestly look you know you, Trump loves this country and he loves the people and he loves the he's always been thankful for decades about that's the why the elite are so scared can you honestly look at Hillary and and think that she loves this country or loves the people you know no the WikiLeaks say she hates it you know it's it's all about money and I think it's I I think in her mind she probably doesn't think she's ever done anything any, any wrong I think she, you know she's probably whiffing her own fumes and real you know think oh well, I'm I am amazing, you know, this, I was the former first lady and, you know, secretary of state. And I'm like, everybody should kiss my ring. Yeah. You know, and waltz me right into the presidency. I just, Entitlement. Yeah. <clears throat> I think she's good. I think she's going to be wearing an orange suit very soon. Well, that's why they're so scared because, you know, Trump other night, I've been talking to folks. They say, if Trump says something, he's going to try it. And that's why. He knows we've got trade deals that are totally one-sided. That's why I keep saying it's so easy. It's so easy. We're not going to screw Mexico or China over. We're just not going to have China with a 35% currency tax on us. Yeah, we're not going <laughs> to bend over and, like, let everybody take it to us that, like, you know, we want to do business with. I think Don't you love, because I know in business, I'm talking to folks, you're, you're a good business guy. You're not going to get run over. You do good deals. Same with me. They go, Alex Jones is a real asshole in business because, uh, yeah, because I wouldn't let you run over me. I do good deals. It's the same thing. No, we're not screwing people, but we're not here to be screwed. Yeah, I think it's, you know, there's there's a difference between being an asshole and a bit difference between being shrewd and, like, you know, on top of your game business-wise, you know. And it's like there's when you get a little bit of success, there's people that'll, perf you know, purposely put themselves in your way to, like, steal from you or sue you or whatever, you know. And I've, I've been through it all, man. Like, you know, like, and it, it's, I think it kind of, you build up a scab towards life in business and society and i just you know i think man if you or i did some of the stuff that hillary's done we'd be in jail yeah we'd be in jail and it's like you know i think the the stuff with comey this is how it works like comey's basically a front office guy right exactly so there's F it's like a spokesman there's there's fbi headquarters and there's field offices all over the country and agents handle investigations, not the not the home office, you know. And Politicos go to political dinners. Yeah. And so, for all we know, the investigation could still be going on because agents could have taken it from, taken it at a, at a field office and taken it over themselves. Well, and that's, that's happened, actually. The problem is they can't get it up through the Justice Department. And... Agents can present their evidence to Congress on their own. I know you're like saying they could. You're being told. I'm guessing you've been told this. I've been told this too. They're ready for press conferences. That's why Hillary's so scared. Yep. I I just think you know. I think they got her. You know. I think they put some kind of pressure on Comey so it didn't appear that he was like doing stuff to manipulate the election, but. I've, I've had a lot of friends that have been under investigation by the feds and any of the ones that ever rap smack about the feds or FBI's guess what guess what including my own sister guess what guess where they're all at in the pen yep and you know the it when FBI comes to interview you they have a 97 percent conviction rate when they interview you they've already got you they they don't they don't they're not like the cops like oh man this guy smacked his wife we better drive out there and see what happened and do an investigation no the FBI doesn't operate like that yeah they and wouldn't they, even mess with Hillary if they weren't going after her. yeah they don't waste waste their time and I you know I think it's only a matter of time will she you know and I I, I don't I don't I don't I'm glad it's not happening before the election because. Then they'll always like, oh, well, well that's what I was told. They're, they're only, I was told it's after the election. They're only, uh, then everybody would always say, oh, Trump only won because she went to jail. No, I don't want it like that. I want him to like have an overwhelming day tomorrow where the people speak. Exactly. And, and it's not that the police or the feds or anybody's perfect. What do you make of, and you know, Jesse James is our guest here in studio, on top TV host, you know, but really a metal urgist, you know, top blacksmith over here. 
expert in automobiles, you name it. I don't know how you describe it all, but really cool stuff. Make uh, good French toast, too. Americana. <laughs> Looking at this, it's that Hillary and the globalists are out to get the country, and then they fund George Soros, this weirdo Nazi collaborator. I say yeah, weirdo. One of, my, one of my customers knows him, and uh, he just says the guy just hates America. And I was like, well, I asked him, I said, well, what's his end game? Like, if Soros is funding all this stuff, what is his, what is, he, he's got to, you know, if he's putting millions of dollars out there, what does he get? And I guess he's like a global commodities guy. And so. He thinks that we collapsing and buy it up. Yep. That's, exactly. And Soros admits that. Well, here's, here's people asking me my end game. Low taxes, prosperity, great medical care, a future. Not as, I mean, you know, these, the, Soros went on 60 Minutes. They've taken it off the web. We've got a clip of it. But if you put it up, they hit you with copyright. And it's Leslie Stahl, she, she's like 1999. She goes, you helped round up more than 10,000 Jews in Romania and Hungary. Do you apologize? He goes, no, I do not. It's what I need to do. The point is, this guy is the biggest demon you can imagine. Yeah. He's here, and just what you said, he doesn't like all this prosperity and freedom. He just wants to mount our head on the wall. Like, I see somebody that's great at doing building stuff. I admire him. George Soros would see you, this great metallurgist, this great artist. He freaking hates you, man. You know, like, it's, it's like this total difference between we love people that produce, well, we hate like, people that it's produce. It's like uh, Brave New World, you know, dumbing down a society, and we just want, like, worker drones that do their part and then die off, and then we'll breed more, and it, it like, you know. He thinks we're there to serve him. Yep. And so let me ask you, I think they want to bridge too far because uh, cops aren't perfect. There's bad cops. Well, like just hey, you know what? In a litigious society, though, why aren't the Dallas, the families of the suing. same Dallas officers suing that guy direct personally? No, I to hear me out. I totally, I totally agree. And, and cop anybody, on average, anybody that lost their house or their business or anything in Ferguson, man, why aren't they going after them? No, because they're too chivalrous. That, that's what I'm saying. Is that I'm somebody that's against the police state, but that's a governmental issue. That's the people. The cop has one of the hardest. Craziest oh, jobs you, on average. They're a the lot most of people, I think they judge because I have tattoos and I ride a bike and I'm from Long Beach and I grew up in the hood and they think I'm like an anti-police. And I was an honorary Long Beach police officer for 15 years. I went to meetings every week and it's like, there's no way in hell that I would want to be a cop in this. Well, that was day. my next point is, you know, cops have problems, but on average compared to the general public, you know, they're more committed, it. more involved points. They're not perfect. But what do you make of Soros and Obama? I think that's their failure point is when they openly tried to cause a civil war and push groups that were saying kill cops. Yeah, you know, and the, the stuff with Trayvon Martin, Ferguson, all that stuff, Obama could have, like, ended it. That's what I mean. Right? So like what do that. you think's and behind that? I don't know. You know, I, I kind of think, like, we don't, you know, we'll know in the next in time, but I don't think we really know who Obama was. You know, I think we all we all saw that one Democratic National Convention speech and we were going, you know, we were tired of Iraq and tired of the Bush years. And we all saw that one speech like, oh, man, this is what we need. And we rode that. We didn't vet him. We didn't do any of the stuff that they normally do. And, you know, all this stuff that's happening now with the one-sided with media and stuff, that was all happening then. But now we know. <laughs> yeah, but not, there was no WikiLeaks and there was no, you know, Twitter wasn't big. Yeah, what do you make of the newest thing where... Every CNN show and MSNBC is scripted by the White House. Can you imagine the job where the White House and, and Hillary and others are running everything they do, Jesse James? That is crazy. The well, questions it's, it's are North Korea. It's like state media and it's like, uh, you know, Russian censorship, you know, and that's like we've always prided ourselves as a, as a free thinking, free media society. Exactly. So how do you as a Democrat... Because we've been to the events in Ferguson. No, no, no. I'm saying, I mean, how do you, as a, I mean, hypothetically, no, not you. How is somebody as a Democrat, because I've never been a Republican, but hell, I'm with them now compared to these people. You sit there. How do you, because we've had reporters in Ferguson and in and in, and in uh, Detroit and in uh, you know California, just all over the country. I can't, I'm trying to mention all the places. We've had reporters probably 30 places, and there are literal college kids bust in, funded by Move On and Soros, saying, Deck the halls with dead cops, shoot cops. That's calling for murder. So I asked the question, how do you get college kids? Just beat their ass. Nightsticks again. Well, I agree. No so pepper how spray, did you, that's what I'm them, saying. You know? How do you get somebody to randomly just say, Money, a cop's gassing him. up his car, I'm going to walk up and shoot him in the head. What What the hell, man? I don't, I don't, 
you know, it's, it's, it's already a tough job enough to be a cop, but to, to then, you know, people trying, I don't know. So what do you think though? You're a smart guy. Well, I'm asking your view. Why is, why are elements of the government of the Democrats trying to say deck the holes with dead cops? And then we get in the last year, a hundred cops or more murdered in cold blood. No one even knew their name. These people just kill them because MSNBC said it was cool. I don't know. You know, it kind of, it's probably the stuff, you know, that you've always said, you know, trying to start a civil war and trying to start unrest. You know, I don't, I, I just can't, I can't put it together in my mind the, the, why someone would do that. You know, why, I don't know. You know, I don't really Because you're not a scumbag. Yeah. And it's just like, you know, hey, you know, I've got my ass kicked by the cops before a, a few times. And you know what? I totally deserve it. Me too. You know, and it's like... Cop if, showed up. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, uh, every, now that everybody's got Facebook Live, okay, c yeah, cop's going to pull me over. It's all out all of right, context. Cool, I'm going to feel... I'm going to talk smack to the cop, and I think if we took out nightsticks and went crack like we used to, then a lot of that would go away. Well, here's what I'll say. We need balance in this country, but the enemy is not local government. The enemy are these multinationals like Soros. Yeah, I think it. I think it's you know if people are being, it's a whole nother element. It's one thing with civil unrest when because I lived through the L.A. riots, and you know, and it was pretty bad. That was that was no one was paying people to do that. People were genuinely pissed in South Central about Rodney King. You know, I don't agree with the way they went about it, but I think you know those guys did beat Rodney King's ass. Rodney King was resisting arrest, but. You know, they overdid it. He he maybe deserved to get a thump on the back of the head or restrained. About but, 20. But he didn't deserve to be kicked and get his ass kicked. You know, I come from the days where if you ran from the cops or you took a swing at a cop, you got your ass kicked. And if maybe it wasn't right then, but it was back at the station when nobody could see it. And that, I think... My experience with the cops was, I don't want to get into it, but I mean, they would actually find out what happened and let me go, even though some other guy was in a coma. But I wasn't looking for trouble... My only issue was there were some political cops who were bad. Jesse James, in the time we have left, you, you and I'm just going to tell you, inside baseball, he he literally makes but it. Yeah, up. basically uh, support cops. That's what I say. Well, because here's the deal. You compare the cops to the general jellyfish. Because you know what? Here's the bottom line. You can talk all the shit you want about police officers and police abuse and all this stuff, but when your 70-year-old mom is choking to death on the floor of your kitchen... You call nine one one. Well, I was about to say it's a cop out because it's individual, and the and the the person the cop is going to get there the fastest. That's who's going to come and try to save her. Well, no, I totally agree with you that statistically, you've got a couple hundred people killed a year by cops, maybe wrongfully, but you've got thousands of people saved. It becomes this establishment government that's so corrupt is wanting to scapegoat the police, and yeah. so that's what I'm against. Yeah, and I think you know uh, Obama. Through through gasoline on it, you know, as the commander in chief, he should protect all military. And was, he should what's the point of that? Protect all law enforcement. That's what he does. Those are the people that are protecting him. It's 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 basically goes right back to the situation with having, you know, Michelle Obama and Hillary and Obama treating their Secret Service like crap. So because what's the psychological calculus by them? I I think they they're in positions that they didn't earn. And they haven't worked hard for, and they act like everything's owed to them, including including military and police and all that. Oh, you guys wouldn't even be here if I wasn't president, you know? Like, you know. And I think it's a, you know, not it's like arrogance. not like Trump getting off the plane and and thanking every police officer and thank you. Look at these guys; those guys are awesome. And the citizens it. and the cooks. Yeah, Ob Obama, Hillary, and Michelle look at all those guys like, oh. <laughs> I'm big timer. I'm flying on a big jet. Look at you. You guys owe me. To the elitism. Yeah. Let me ask you this question then. Looking at this and looking at how the so-called left operates, what would they do, Jesse James, if they had their way with America? Uh, I think basically the plan is to keep everybody on some kind of government assistance and flood as many people in there to, I, I, it's basically going, you know, not having a country and open borders and all that stuff. It's just, it's basically not having a country anymore. You know, all the stuff that we fought for 200 years and fought several wars to defend, 
they don't believe in that. They don't believe in the American dream. And, and, you know, it sounds, you know, every word of that pledge of allegiance and every word of the declaration of independence and every word of the constitution, those guys, that, that stuff's meaningful. And people can say, oh, that's America, that's a cult. And I used to even think that 10 years ago, but then I realized, except what else there is. We don't do this. Well, here's, this, here's, this, the, here's, this the, here's the thing. It was go successful. To, go, to, go to Calexico in Mexico or Tijuana and then go right over the border. That's what I'm saying. Go right over the border to National City. There's no difference between, you know, the borders leak into America and it makes all the... the, the no, I all agree. The cities I, that no, are right over the border. That's what I'm saying. Like a third world country. And that pretty soon that's going to go farther and farther and farther. You know, and, and the bottom line, I think, is with we just can't afford it. Our, our, the tax dollars we pay, and I pay a lot of taxes, and everybody in this country that pays taxes, that it's not enough to afford millions of people to come and get health care and all this stuff. And it's like, you know, I, I'm, yeah, come here, be legal, work your ass off, and pay your taxes, do your fair share, not come here and manipulate the system. It should be special to be an American. Now, I want to add this before we close and a few other final points with Jesse James here with us. I, I've been over your house before, hung out, shotguns, you know, you know, kids are, you know, part of the same events and sports and stuff. And every time I'm like, hey, your guns are really great. We ought to do some business, blah, blah, blah. You're not even into business. You're just like separately do it yourself. But let's spend some time because this is what America is, is men and women going out with passion, creating art, creating firearms, creating literature, creating music, creating culture. Let's talk about Jesse James, because you didn't come and talk about you, but it's all what Donald Trump's pushing, this American dream. Let's talk about what you're doing with your firearms and this, 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 this great Breitbart article I have here where you're launching a nationwide movement, got it right here somewhere, uh, to launch this whole Second Amendment uh, operation, a Second Amendment basic defense group. That is super exciting, because look, I thought it was yeah, the gun I was pretty, manufacturers. pretty honored to be named in that. Like uh, the NRA, you know, I ha I uh, I I have a licensing company and handle a brand for the NRA called NRA Originals, and they and I have a really great relationship with them. And they asked me uh, if I would want to be part of it, and I'm sure. And it was like, wow, like I might have to buy a suit. <laughs> but it's awesome because because listen, I've always said this. It's not enough for people to be firearms manufacturers. We, we, you have to get aggressive politically. And they go, you don't want to be aggressive. We'll be targeted by Bloomberg. F him, man. And get ready to bleep this for our stations. But I'm going to say it because I mean it. Fuck Michael Bloomberg, who has 15 bodyguards and all these weapons. You know why I don't like Michael Bloomberg? Because uh, when I was, I was on the Letterman show one time, and I had a front-engine dragster that we took down 8th Avenue. And uh, the side, the street, uh, the side street on where the uh, Letterman show was filmed, and I did like 140. The Detroit Theater, or whatever it was. Yeah, 140 miles an hour down the street, and wow. crossed it. And Bloomberg came down there and shut us down. So, well, I mean, look, my my, my <laughs> thing is, listen, you don't have bodyguards. You got yourself. I don't either. But the frustration is, I go to some public events. I've got to now. Man, the general public can't pay for that. How uncool is that we have video of him of 15 bodyguards with guns. Yeah, but that's just, you're just talking, to, like, when you get out on the extreme edges of of the country, California, New York, you're going to have all these politicians that, like, you know, they're trying to be like the next Ralph Nader, you know, I'm going to ban the Pino because they catch on fire, you know? No, I and agree, they're, but they're it's game to, over, man. Trying to do you all have six bodyguards, Michael Moore. Yeah, but, They've actually physically accosted me before. You don't get guns when I don't. Yeah, you know, it's like you like, don't have a right to bitch trying, about guns when you have a freaking bodyguard. Yeah, but they're trying to make all these rules and laws to like, oh, yeah, he's the guy that banned the big gulps, you know? And like, I think I agree. It like, it's right. self-aggrandizing, which makes them like, oh, I'm the guy, you know, I get stuff done. And, and really, it's just, you know, imposing rules and regulations on a society. It doesn't work because gun violence in New York and... California is horrible, and they're two of the strictest states on gun rules. So how is that helping? JJFU.com, JesseJamesFU.com. Um, well, it's, it, we've talked for years about getting you on air. It's great to have you here. I'm going to run a tape here and you know see you out, but I just please come back. I know we've talked to like, hey, we ought to show this blacksmithing, and I'm busy, you're busy, we don't do how it. Tall's, but how tall is Charlotte getting? 
She's, she's like a little tiny. Almost as big as your daughter. <laughs> no, I think she might be taller. She's like, I looked at her last night. I'm like, wow, you're like, you're not a, like a little tiny baby anymore. You're like a tall kid. Uh, it's great that our daughters are best friends, but it's like, it's like Charlotte and Sunny World. That's all she talks about. And it's great. I'm, I'm just, I just, I'm, I'm, they went to, I guess, a concert last night, but thanks for taking them out. But, uh, you know, that's why I fight. Yep. Yep. Give them, leave them something a little better than what we had. Absolutely. Well, you know, that's what gets to me is I'm not perfect, but I'm not out to screw people over. And well, I look at Obama. Here's the, here's the uh, you know, I'll tell a little story that like, that's one of my favorite stories about being an American. So when I was in uh, north of Baghdad, and I landed in Baghdad, ironically, on Election Day 2005. Joe was telling me earlier, I didn't yeah. know this, you went into a combat zone. Yeah, yeah. So I landed there. I went on my own, and it was at a time where the war had fallen out of favor. Well, I didn't know this. Media-wise? Yeah, say, hold, on, hold on, hold on. It impressed Joe and the, and the troops. Yeah. You, were, you went in a war zone. Yeah, I It wasn't went, like you went in... I went in 2003, a month after the war broke out, went to Baghdad, and then I went back in 05, and... When I went to a field hospital there, uh, north of Baghdad, where it was kind of the main combat hospital, and the, you know, it was pretty bad. You know, there was like, you know, two or three kids a day getting killed, yeah, was... IEDs and stuff. And they, uh, <clears throat> the thing that struck me is all the doctors were like from John Hopkins and George Washington University, and they did like, you know, thirty day stints there as volunteers. You know, Jeez. main trauma surgeons and stuff. And so these guys were like. You know, and I went into the field hospital to meet some guys that were laid up that weren't bad enough to go to Ramstein, you know. In when, Germany. Yeah, and <coughs> so they were taking care of some troops, and, like, they had an I, I was like, whoa, this guy's, like, he looked, you know, like an Iraqi guy, and he was wearing Al-Qaeda, like, kind of garb, and they had his whole head opened up, and, like, they, his whole skull was peeled open, and they had part of his skull cap off, and... I said the one doctor I was kind of walking me around and like I remember the guys that was hey what's up he's doing brain surgery and like shook my hand and I was like just the whole visual of it like burned into my brain and I asked him I said man you know this is like there's a war going on right now really bad and we're in the main combat hospital and you have one of our enemy in here and you're trying to fix them you're digging metal shards we're better stuff. than them no and he said He's all, yeah, man, we're Americans. That's what we do. Exactly. I didn't know you were going to say that. Yep. And that, that, it, that, you know, that whole trip, like, changed my life. That, like, yeah, you know, and that's, that's the es essence what this country is about. It's like, hey, we can be Democrat or Republican or whatever, but first and foremost, we're Americans. And when this is all over on Wednesday, hopefully we'll get back to going to, you know, everybody working together and well i didn't mean to steal your thunder i don't think it did but that is americana not that we're perfect yeah yeah you that know. we have always been the standard of the best not that we're perfect why does our media point out where we falter then what is the whole point of that yeah well i think it's going to get to a point where you know we're used to doing things a certain way we're used to going in and fixing everything and you know and if we keep going down the road we are we're not going to be able to do that we're not going to be able we're going to you know, dip down to third world country status where our military won't be strong and our resources won't be strong. And I, I always want to be like, oh, yeah, America, you know, these people were stranded. We went in and saved them. You know, that's what it's all about. And I think, you know, if we don't take care of ourselves first and foremost, and number one, take care of our people, our vets, our homeless, the elderly, take care of those people, then we don't have anything. We're nobody. And I mean, you're right. How we treat the least of us, we treat ourselves, as Christ said. And it really is true that we have an establishment that's threatened by the spree de corps and strength of America. Even though they run the country, they fundamentally can't stand the honorableness of it because they're so dishonorable. And never before have we had a candidate like Hillary Clinton who is so evil, so dishonorable, all the WikiLeaks proving it, that she is fit for a prison cell not to run this country, and then there's Donald Trump, who was like sent from central casting from heaven <laughs> to put up, because I put up with crap, you put up with crap, he's put up with 100 times what we have, and I just hope and pray you're right. I think he's going to be elected tomorrow. If they steal it, it's a whole other ball of wax, but regardless, do you agree with me, Jesse James, you know, as an American patriot, as an entrepreneur, as a father, that Trump has won already just by putting the issue of Americanism, not globalism, anti-cronyism, 
true free market. He has well, he'll, turned the page. He'll reach across the line and make stuff happen. You know. So you're convinced he's getting elected tomorrow? I think so. You know what? I'm pretty confident. Hey, I know the polls and the internal ones, which you know people pay to get, but aren't the ones that are on the news. If they, if they, well, they only had seven percent more Democrats, which they think demographically they were. Are. Yeah, they were trying. Uh, who was it, AP or someone was trying uh, reverse psychology, saying like, "Well, you know, in Texas, if you don't vote for Trump, you'll benefit more." <laughs> like, you know, it, so that means he's going to win Texas. I think it's going to. Well, be how big. could he not? If he, if he wins Michigan Fl and Florida and New Hampshire. It's over. Well, Hillary in an hour is doing an emergency midnight deal in Michigan. What does that tell you, Jesse James? In fact, you're here. I've been trying to get you here for years. You're here. Other points you want to make, we're going to shut this down and air a tape and come back with the next host. I'm good, man. Well, I'm just glad that uh, I've tried to get you on a few times. You're like, yeah, yeah, but it never happens. Let's go to dinner this weekend. Let's do it. But what, but what got you out? Just the epic level of what's happening? I think so. I think it's trying to, like, uh, uh, I think try to put a human voice to uh, the, you know, it's the kind of the last night of the status of this country, the way it is, you know, I it's think, a it's, I think, it's, I think to, uh, tomorrow's a significant day for us in our lifetime. But I think tonight is like, you know, maybe someone that'll be watching this and realize that, you know, I'm not just some schmo, you know, I have some ideas in my head, but you know, ultimately, uh, uh, you know, I might talk a lot of smack, but ultimately I want the better for this country and for everybody in it. That's deep because even let's say Trump loses or wins, making the right decision against the establishment, the communist Chinese, the Saudi Arabians, the big banks, they're all against Trump. If people claim they're against the establishment, how could you not be for Trump? The establishment is against the American system. Yeah, I think so. They want to, you know, they want to own us and, and take everything over. All right, I'm going to do this because... I don't know about that whole banks poisoning our water thing, though. Well, that's a banks. It's a little bit twist. <laughs> I've got the White House science czar admitting they put hydrofluorosilicic acid. So one of my friends from California sent me uh, some of the uh, a picture of your silver... What is the drops thing you have? No, no, colloidal silver's great when... Yeah, he's like, look, show Alex this. I take this every day. When a regular antibiotic doesn't work, it's been proven. You got to give me some of that. Brother, I only, look, you've known me a while. I only go with what I believe. give me the shits, is it? I mean, no, no, I love, no, <laughs> I'm not giving the shits. Let me tell you the shits. <laughs> no, you got to delay that. We're on some stations. Let me tell you, X2, we, it's the good halogen. Okay. Bromine, bromide, chlorine, fluoride are the bad halogens in our glands. Only iodine that's, that's in the food and the water, but it's very low level now, is there. All cultures that have it, Japanese the longest lived, high iodine. You, we, we, we sell iodine that's blue. Real iodine's not red, it's blue. The crystal's blue. Yeah. I was a big, I'm a tough guy like you. I was a big fat ass, gained all this weight. I work out less than I used to. I've lost 45 pounds just taking Survival Shield X2 iodine because it's really the good halogen. But here's the problem. Two weeks to three weeks into taking it. <laughs> oh, man, dude, oil coming out of your body. But the... it, it it's, it's heavy because <laughs> the toxins. So... Not that you need it, but I'm going to give you some X2. All right, I'll try it. Now, now, in closing, I'm going to air this tape here. I want to air a couple of clips. I want to air Conway explodes on Jake Tapper saying, you keep saying Trump's going to lose. Now he's ahead in polls. Back off. We've got Clinton Rape Whistle. I'm going to air that in line. MSNBC. Hey, what's up with all the... I, I just can't wrap my head around that whole child molestation, sex trafficking thing. Let's talk about it. Okay, you brought it up. Here's the deal. We like beautiful, full-grown women. We're men. No, but no... God, do you think that stuff's true? Let me tell you. Um, look at the Catholic Church, not bashing Catholics. Look at Sandusky and look at what happened at to Penn State. Yeah. The way well, I mean, there's always going to be evil pedophiles and stuff all over the world, but I'm just talking about that one with Podesta and that stuff. Let me because I read the emails and like them talking about pizza and hot dog and like. And we got three like, little kids in the hot tub for entertainment. Yeah, I can't, like... I We're not going just, to that party. Yeah, like, I, I don't know what I wanted to see. We might go to the party and, like, kill people, but we're not going. I don't know what I wanted to see in the emails, but I, that's, you know, I think, like, pedophilia and child molestation... That's the line right it's there. It's grounds for death. Grounds for death. You know? Uh, yeah, I don't normally have visions of killing people, but when we yeah, do talk about like, us, we're I don't, I don't, I didn't realize, you know, really is the whole seediness of that whole side taking that... Well, let me give you the intel. 
I was told a week before it came out that the NYPD forced the, the FBI to come out with a new deal. Not the ground, the, you know, the ground swell FBI is good folks, but the top. And, and they've admitted they have this 15-year-old he's sexting. I've been shown by law enforcement what he was doing. Yeah, with the Anthony Weiner deal. Anthony Weiner. So, I don't know if all those thousands of emails in John Podesta's and his brother's situation are real, but here's the deal. Podesta's brother, the top lobbyist in D.C., is in a Washington Post article in 2004, I'm just give you the data dumps that you asked, saying, I take photos of naked teenagers, and this is our deviant art, and this is our right, we're going to show it. Then there's that. Then there's all this weird, and we're not joking about Satanism, like a tattoo or something. We mean real Aleister Crowley black magic in the emails. This, this stuff is what, like, this is the stuff that you've been talking about for years. This, this type of behavior. It is, and because I would cover it, I had... High level FBI. And this is what, this is the stuff that like people, oh, he's a conspiracy theorist and stuff like that. And it's like, I, I looked at it and I'm like, man, this is like, besides the Soros and him funding, you know, trying to create a civil war and stuff like that, but seeing like this uh, accusations of pedophilia and stuff that looks like it's probably true. Well, like, exactly. They're, def so they're def definitely not talking about pizzas. And they're not talking about... They're like, we got $65,000 yeah. of hot dogs And tonight. the Epstein guy with the jet to this private island. And, and Hillary. Like, yeah. And now Eric Prince of Blackwater, who's a patriot. Mm -hmm. And I want to say this on air because I did the research. Every time a mercenary did something wrong with British companies, you name it, they would blame Blackwater. Blackwater was one of the most respected companies. Prince has come out and said, I have law enforcement sources. Hillary was on the plane. It's pedophilia with kids. That's Breitbart. So, let me just give you the full scoop. I had family in the CIA when I was growing up. And I don't mean like analyst stuff. I mean trigger-pulling people, okay? And so I grew up with like, because they, they go after families. It's like breeds of dogs, though. I mean, That's cool, because my dad was a drug dealer. Well, then you know how it works. <laughs> the point is, is that I was always taught there's a corrupt group in the government. They're involved in all this evil, and we have to protect America. This is going on. This is happening. I'm not in the CIA myself. I just knew some family that was in it. They said, no, it's Satanists. They're hurting kids. Then I learned about more. I talked about it on air. But just in closing, Jesse, I'm going to hold diatribe. Then I was told by law enforcement, yes, Hillary's involved. Yes, it's happening. Yes, they're doing it. Yes, Anthony Weiner. Then it comes out. They're at these events, Aleister Crowley stuff. They're making jokes. Then there's all these weird code words. The truth is, I don't know how far it goes because I'm not, obviously. I mean, it's so, it's, that's like, you know, that's like a movie evil. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like a horror film evil. And it, All I knew was like, I was brought up it's with. It's so hard reading that stuff, but it's not presented in like a, a, you know, sensationalized manner to read it in a matter of fact manner, the way the emails lay it out and, and the way I guess Reddit and stuff is, it's like. Well, they're like, we're going to have three kids in a hot tub for your enjoyment. I mean, that isn't hard to figure out. Yeah, like, I can't, I don't know. And then you got to look at it like, I don't even want anybody that's like remotely associated with pedophilia to be the commander in chief. Exactly. And again, <laughs> you know, that's who even, it, even if it's, you know, partially true or 3% true, I don't want them anywhere near making any kind of decisions for schools and kids and anything like that. Well, you know, exactly. Why? They're like... Or if they were married to someone, or if they're, they're you know, someone they was related to did that and they covered it up. But I don't think wanna... about it. They ha You wouldn't want to screw the country. You're like Trump. You want prosperity. They've got to hire somebody. It's like an entrance exam. You've, yeah. I just like... think it's been going on so long with that kind of behavior and corruption and stealing that those people probably don't even think they're doing anything wrong. They probably think, you know. Oh, I agree. You know, it's it's we owe them and they're elitists and we should be bowing down to them. And I think it's like time. Instead of beating their brains yeah, out with a baseball time, bat? It's, it's time that, you know, we have some kind of integrity again and some kind of class. Let me ask you that in closing. Why are they so scared of Trump? Because politicians all offer rhetoric. Well, Don Jr. said it the best. It's like Hollywood's a kind of, or not Hollywood, well, basically, Hollywood, Washington. But Washington 
is the kind of town where everybody, Democrat or Republican, they're all getting money and they're all getting paid for stuff like Hillary does. And they all, everybody takes care of everyone. And Trump represents that, hey, the gig's up. We're done. Clean house. I agree. You the know? fact and that I they're shitting all, their pants. All these politicians and all these crooked media outlets. Because what are what is like Wolf Blitzer and all these guys that like, you know, basically scammed and cheated to get some kind of edge. What are they going to do after tomorrow when Trump wins? How are they going to look and have any kind of integrity? And I agree with you. If they try to steal it, though, and they've been caught rigging everything, it blows them up worse. That's why we can't lose. Yeah. Unless Soros causes some type of major race right now. In closing, Jesse James, an hour and 20 minutes with us. It's been you amazing. You said in closing. I've already said it five times. <laughs> we'll keep going 20 hours. I love this. <laughs> I finally got you on air. How many hours you got left? 38? How long you want to go? <laughs> no, we're going to get you out of here. But It's like, it's after shit at 9 o'clock. The TV's watching me. It's 1020. I get up. There Any other points you want to make, Jesse? I don't think so. I think I'm good. Well, you've said we're it all. going to go celebrate this weekend. Making America great again, steak dinner. You keep talking about these steak dinners. I'm ready. We got to go to that place out, out off of 71. 71. Yep. I, I, every time you're like, let's go. Like, all, right, all I got to do is something else. We can't but, We can't go by ourselves. We got to take the girls. Yeah, let's take, let's take everybody. All right. Okay, we're going to go do it. But listen, I'm going to run a tape here. Let's run uh, Why Women Hate Hillary Clinton. Alex, I love that sorry to yep. interrupt, but Ted Nugent just took the stage at the Grand Rapids, Michigan rally. Let's play Trump, Ted so Nugent. I think we should let's, go to break with which that. We've got tomorrow. I'm going to get Ted Nugent on. Uncle Ted. Uncle, Here's Uncle Ted at Grand Rapids, uh, Michigan rally. Let's play that, as I say, by the Jesse James of JJFU.com. Any other websites? Uh... I just bought an ammunition company, me and, me and a partner in Payson, Arizona. That is so American. Yeah, guns and That's not so manly. I, I need an ammo company myself. I, you have to have armaments companies to be a man, right? All right, I'm going to go home. I'm tired. JJFU.com. All right, let's go, to, uh, let's go to Uncle Ted. Here it is. Thanks, Jesse. Thanks, man. Great to have you. I'm not going to sit here and say, see, I told you so, that communist Chinese style net censorship was coming to the web because it's already here. It's being announced. The way you keep the internet open and free is you get involved more than ever. Go to InfoWars.com forward slash app. A new battleship in the fight. InfoWars Live, available right now. We're looking for a crew to man it. You going to sit down and play games and be a trendy? Or are you going to be part of history? Don't sit by and let the internet and free speech be stolen from you. Take action.